One of the pressures that I feel is important for us to talk about in the church is this pressure to not listen to our conscience in the name of obeying the word or in the name of having faith. There's a lot of fear around listening to our conscience, um, listening to our own feelings about things as if that is going to lead us into sin, as if that's coming from just a sinful heart uh, that's trying to deceive us. The problem with this view is that it hinders the Holy Spirit from getting to the, the work that is meant to be happening to us because the work of Christianity is not just keeping, you know, the, the moral letter of the law. It is meant to be a spiritual change where we have a, a spiritual life within us. And the way that we are meant to interact with God is meant to be coming into a oneness with God where, where we are one, where we are united with God in conviction with him, where we, we wrestle through the word. And as we wrestle through the word, we come into a spiritual understanding of what God really means for us to walk in. And also, when we listen to our conscience, we listen to how things affect us in how we feel and, and our thoughts about this. Um, this is meant to be part of the conversation we're supposed to be having with God. And it's only when you're really having that conversation with God that you are coming into a spiritual understanding. The problem is, is that we often feel like we are wrong. Whenever there is a voice inside of us that is disagreeing with what we have been taught is spiritually right. And it's not about necessarily disagreeing with God, because that's the assumption. The assumption is that this is what is God. This is what God is saying. And any time there is that voice inside of us that is disagreeing with those things, it can be sin. But it can often be an indication of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit showing us the things that are not spiritually right, that are not actually spiritually of God. And instead of listening to that, we're silencing that. In reality, that voice is often a sign that you are getting more and more in your own faith and your own walk with God. And that, that voice can be a sign of the Holy Spirit in disagreement or provoking you and showing you that something is wrong, that these things are not right, that they are not in agreement with God. And though they might be in agreement with like the letter, they're not in agreement with the Spirit of God. Where, where these things aren't in agreement with other scriptures of God that we know and we believe. A lot of the views around God are based in this don't feel, don't think, just obey. And that is the danger of, if we look around, I mean, so many cults have operated that way, false religions operate that way. But that is often the basis of what we think it means to really obey God and have faith. So a lot of people, when they talk about you know, obey God's word. That's really what they mean. And if we, we look at that, we see that there's a belief system uh, ascribed to what it means to obey God. And you can disagree with a belief system of what something means without being in a disagreement with God himself. And actually you're fighting for the spiritual understanding, the right spiritual understanding of what those things are. Because people often trust in this militant view of God, what they end up doing is they end up denying the, the things around them that are meant to be giving them evidence that what they're doing is not good and it's actually working harm. And these people harm themselves, they harm others around them because they don't listen to their own feelings. They don't listen to the feelings of others. They don't listen to um, their own conscience bearing um, conviction against them that these things can't be good and they can't be right. They don't, they don't look at the fruits. They don't assess the fruits in their lives and, and they don't honestly test their 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 beliefs about God in reality it's kind of like our lives are or our, our beliefs about God they're they're like a cardboard boat you know those competitions where they have those cardboard boats and they they build them and they race them it's kind of like we our belief systems are kind of like that and you need to go and you, you've built this boat and it sounds great sounds like it's going to work but you need to go and put it on the water and see if it actually works. You need to see if your boat floats. And the 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 testing and the, the failing or the succeeding is the evidence that what we're doing is good or right. 
and and they deny this this fruit they deny this reality in the name of believing these these militant views of well obviously this is what the bible means there's very real dangers in people just saying that you know they're listening to the holy spirit and they just completely drift into doing whatever they want there is very real fear that we are you know just choosing our own sinful desires over the word of god that's that's definitely true but we act as if that's the only danger and that's the problem because that danger is no more dangerous than having such a a, a blinding hard-hearted view about god's law and following it right off of a cliff because of your own doctrines and not really coming into a spiritual understanding of god bypassing the whole purpose that god is meant to be working in us to make us sanctified and holy that if you don't if you don't work for a, a spirit that is good, if you don't work for a spiritual understanding of God, then you don't come into a right knowledge of God. And not having a right knowledge of God, you can do things in the name of God contrary to what is truly of God spiritually. God expects that we would really follow him, that we would really obey him, that we would follow him and do what is really good and right in his sight. But there's a real danger of making God a tyrant and making God command that which is actually harmful and evil. And this is something that the devil loves, loves to get Christians to do and be a part of is, is, is you know, walk straight off of a cliff in the name of obeying God's authority and, and harming others and harming themselves. And, and then these people say, you know, they turn around deformed and they say, you know, how beautiful is it I, that I follow God? And people can see that it's not a beautiful thing because they've mistaken God, that God is not evil. God is not harmful. We have a right, a right to look at those things and question those things. And if we don't and we just silence our own mind, our own convictions, the Holy Spirit pulling on us and we just kind of lobotomize ourselves, we say and say that that's beautiful, say that that's glorifying God, this misses the heart of God and, and we, we speak evil of God with our lives. This is just as dangerous. This is just as evil as, as following your own desires and completely casting God beside you. The, the danger here is that these people so often believe that they're keeping God's word when what they're keeping is a militant view of God's word and one that does harm and they're incapable of looking at how much harm this is doing to themselves, to, to others, to their own spouses, you know, to their own children because they believe that they have to do this in order to obey God. And this issue has deceived so many people to do harm, to, to kill in the belief that they're doing service to God, to do, to do violence in the name of serving God. And yes, they don't pick up a physical sword, but they pick up a, a, a spiritual sword and they do violence in God's name and, and believe that this is what it means. This is what they have to do to serve God.